Hey guys, what's up? So the patch 1.105 just came out. Had some pretty big changes overall to pretty much every build in the game, I guess. But yeah, some especially big changes to this one as well. And people have been asking for me to make a proper build guide where I talk about why I went something what are good stats on the items, etc, etc. So, I'm gonna run a quick and taint it first. So one of the main things negatively that changed from the patch is the tankiness. We're a lot less tanky and healthy then because there was some back notes. They did something like that when the game came out. Some notes that said like health regen instead of giving you an increase to your existing health region, they actually just gave you a certain amount of your HP, I think 10%. But as you can see, I really like to kill like the champions on the untainted. It's kind of a waste of time, like you see people speed running these in one minute or something. I'm not really doing that because I don't know. It's a little bit too stressful for me. So whenever there's like champions, I just like to kill them. And as you can see, the tankiness is not not a problem at all. We just don't go HP regen anymore because we're already because of the sacred damage node on the tree. We're already going with boss shield. So for us, Force Shield always needs to be above 50%. Not right now. For our damage to be the spell damage bonus. So it's honestly much more ideal to go Force Shield based anyway. Sometimes it's a little scary because you need to be leeching for it to be out. Whereas the regen was passive, right? So. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not careful and that type of stuff happens. But I will show my gear in a second. And the interesting thing is that I don't really have a lot of sorcery gear right now. I'm actually still using most of my old HP regen gear. Not possible. But yeah, gear's not ideal. I could have way more fast shield and then we would be a lot more tanky. Can't As you can see I'm also only level 81 right now. So my tree isn't as optimized because I just straight up don't have enough points. Damage has increased quite a bit with the patch because they actually made the skill nodes multiplicative. Yeah, I'm not the fastest. I mean, I could. I could be faster, but it's not an immortal offering build yet. 
and the model offering just gives you a lot of speed obviously I mean, I'm sure something happened you can definitely make this an a model offering build but there's plenty of build guides out there i think one of the best ones i've seen is from bestie who also reached level 90 already was it quite a while ago and i can't really add anything to those builds but the thing is the better your gear is, the more amazing those builds are gonna feel, and my build is kind of... Like, I started doing this with a level 76 character doing the 187 Untainted, so... It's geared towards people who don't have that crazy gear yet. As you can see, I am Force Shield based right now, but... I switched in these... So I get a little bit of force here. These aren't really that great for the build, honestly. They do have transfer time, which is nice, but I already have a little bit overkill on transfer time, I think. So the main thing we're looking for is the transfer time and the crit chance, the flat crit chance. If you can get occult damage as well, like the percent where I have like elemental here. If you can get that to be occult, it's probably a little better, not much, because we're converting frost. I'm not sure if it really is how it works, but I think your base spell will always convert no matter what, and since frost is the main damage type. So yeah, I think if you want to be safe, it's probably better to have occult damage instead of elemental damage. But the main things that are really interesting is the transfer time and the crit chance. And then of course, like these force shield numbers aren't very high. This is just stuff I picked up today because I was still, as you can see on most slots, I'm still using HP and resistance. So... I'm going to hover over those a little bit longer in a second as well. We don't have transfer time on the chest. You can get transfer time on the chest as well. But yeah, the main thing... If you don't have these, then the transfer time is definitely more important. But it would be better to have like transfer time on all the normal slots where you can have it. And not use these spoilers. First of all, they're unique, so not everyone has them, right? But also these spoilers don't really give you a lot. It's like lots of force shield stuff, force shield related stuff, which is nice. But it does, you can't really get crit chance on these. You can't really get ferocity or toughness on these. Like if you can get stats on your gear as well, besides like the crit chance and the transfer time, then you either want ferocity or toughness it doesn't really matter what you have on the gear because you can just adjust how many points you put in what for me it was up to level 76 i put about 60 percent so six out of ten points in my ferocity and the rest in toughness but then since level 76, I just put all of it in ferocity, didn't put any into toughness anymore. Um, if you really have force shield gear everywhere, and like me right now as like hybrid or just straight up HP resistance gear, if you have force shield gear everywhere, then you might even get away with less toughness in this. Now, of course, once again, if you have toughness on gear, one of the both stats you would be looking for would either be ferocity or toughness, but depending on what you have, you could put less points into it as well. Toughness, I would just go by experience. If you can survive, that means you have enough for shield. Um, projectile pierce strength is another very interesting thing. We're going to look at the tree a little bit more in a second, but just why projectile pierce is because of these notes. So 30% per remaining pierce, which also, by the way, one point is on tree as well. So you don't need 
this type of jewelry to start it out. Um, I have a belt with it too, but at the moment I'm using a magic find belt because as most people, I'd like to eventually get a trial belt. So this helps just with getting more unique right? So. So Pierce on the jewelry, obviously now that we're transferred into Force Shield, Force Shield is good, you can get like flat Force Shield, you can get like percent Force Shield as an implicit, but your health regen and all that stuff is not really that big of a deal. Damage, sacred damage would be ideal because we are doing the sacred version of the Arctic Spear, but honestly, any kind of added to spells, crit chance score, once again, crit chance, is, crit chance or critical damage is big for us because on tree we're all going crit right now. I only have 62% because my gear is really, really poop, but I think you can get it much, much higher than that. Boots, I am using these. Probably not that awesome, but they do have a lot of move speed, but legendary boots with just a lot more force shield and with like maybe 38-40% move speed and once again with crit chance, maybe some ferocity, some toughness would obviously be better. I don't think you can get transfer time on boots, sadly. If you can get cooldown at some places, it's also nice for the the ESA jump. The ESA jump is a little bit up to personal preference. I will show the skills in detail in a second as well. I just wanted to go over this real quick. You can also go with this upgrade for the ESA jump. Then you can just cast it without cooldown, but eventually it will cost a lot of rage. And what a lot of people do is just they teleport around get their rage up real quick and then they just kill packs with where is it with the havoc orb i personally don't like it as much because of the consumption time makes you stand still i just prefer using the turret running around placing it and if there's a champion i want to kill then i just use havoc orb and Arctic Spear and I just press both of them down right. Okay, so gear wise, weapon um, can be a pistol, can be a dagger, both have their ups and downs. A pistol, as you can see, can roll transfer time as well. Once again, I may have overdone the whole transfer time thing a little bit. So maybe I don't need it. The dagger has the benefit that you can use melee skills as well. Like you can use um, blood for blood. You can use juggernaut, I guess. War pass can be pretty cool. Like especially if you have the easy jump, no cooldown thingy going on. One kind of silly thing you can do is you can travel around real quickly with the easy jump till your rage is full and then you just switch to war pass and travel even further. It's a little clunky though, I personally don't really like war pass that much, but that would be one of the main reasons why you would want to go dagger over a pistol. For me it's like all my gear isn't super optimized, as you can see I have a lot of different damage types on my pistol which isn't the greatest. But it is a good thing about this version of the build compared to most material based builds you will see that like convert to rend. This build, it doesn't really matter, just get a pistol with a lot of base damage. But ideally you would want as high as possible of a fist roll, so like added fist and like the increased fist, the percent increased fist that you can roll and then just sacred on top and obviously a bit higher sacred roll than I have here 
I think you can get like 80 to 100 if you get a really good roll. So that would be a really, really good weapon, just fist and sacred, but like the same total damage because you have better rolls on it. Because mine right now doesn't have added flat fist and it doesn't have increased fist. So my fist roll is really bad and the sacred roll is just a very low tier. So that would be better, but that's the beauty of this build, that it doesn't make the biggest difference. Obviously the damage is not the same as if you have a really, really good weapon, but it's still enough for level 187, it just takes a little bit longer. Probably, if you do a little bit different version of my tree, but with a model offering, and if you're really into that rushed playstyle, you can probably easily do under two minutes. I was pretty close to two minutes myself once, but I just don't like the playstyle. But yeah, I I just think that the builds that are already out there by like Bestie and what's the other guy called? Binus Hole. Those type of builds are better suited. But yeah, you also need a better weapon, etc. to make them work real well. Um, Catalyst, I don't even have my roll perfectly yet because both defensive and support can roll on these, so it's a little bit obnoxious, but as you can see, we do want the transfer time speed there as well, ideally three times. It's a little bit of a low level Catalyst, but it only has minus 50% transfer time. And like all the stuff it has is really good, it's just that the rolls are all really low because of the low level but overall this catalyst right now gives me more than the stuff that i found so that's why i'm using it um i hope i didn't leave out any of the gear so i'm not gonna mouse over it one more time once again keep in mind most of my gear is not great right now the force shield items i have are not good but we do want fast shield and a lot of my items aren't even fast shield yet because before we were playing the build with a lot of HP regen but since that got nerfed it's not viable at all anymore. I had like 7k regen and it went down to a couple hundred. It's lower now because on tree I have my HP reduced but it wasn't sustainable anymore. The region was just not there. So the tree, we have Blessed Silver and Eganus, which is just insanely good because we always crit. It's always full if we're actually fighting. We have Dire Juncture just so our leech is more effective. And like, we leech every, I don't know, I think it's the same as the regen rate, so I would guess we re leech every 0.8 seconds, so for the damage to be 1 second delayed, yeah, it's strong. Then extra projectile, extra projectile pierce strengths, and as I showed this already, the pierce, increased damage per pierce. Uh, our crit chance is always above 75% if we're bossing. If we're running around peering doing this, then it sometimes will go up, but it also doesn't really matter because we're not DPSing. But if we're fighting a boss or a champion because of all the transfer time we have, as you can see, we always make use of that mode. It's impossible for us to run out of to go below 75% willpower. So that's that note. Then the first shield instead of HP. And damage over time affects your force shield. Then double maximum force shield. Probably not necessary with my current gear. Since I don't even have all force shield gear right now, it's maybe a little bit of a waste, but. It is pretty significant, and obviously if you have all four shield gear, then it's really, really good. And the sacred damage, it seems to be multiplicative. So in a sense, 
you don't even need a weapon with sacred damage on it. And technically you don't even need to convert your Arctic Spear to sacred. However, we're getting like sacred damage increase here and also at some points on the tree we're also getting occult damage increase. So I think overall it's, here for example, I think overall it's still best to try and get your gear towards sacred damage as well and to convert. But this note, these notes are just really strong. They seem, as far as I've seen, they seem to be working with any kind of weapon. Like even if you have more base damage on something that's not sacred, it still seems to give you the same amount. So here we have the crit chance score. Ideally, at some point with more levels, you might want to get this. Or for sure, full damage taken is reduced. It doesn't seem to be necessary, but probably nice to get. And the same goes for thirst for knowledge. However, this tree is pretty... It's not set in stone. Like... For me personally, for what I wanted, this is the least wasted points. Got the critical damage multi here, and then we got the summon HP regen here, which is like next to this. Um, if you want to go a mortal offering, for example, then you would want to pass through this. You would want to change your gate of fates slightly. So that you pass through that and you leave something else out but yeah patch hugely hugely buffed the damage that you get from these type of nodes and i think it's also connected to the level of the skill what they buffed but either way i before the patch i had 16k average damage and now i have 28 almost without really changing anything. I think it was only 22, but then I changed my tree around a little bit as well because of the whole fast shield thing. But still, it, it was a giant, giant damage buff. And the only downside is that the crazy HP regen is gone. And yeah, these are for the portion of the damage dealt to the summon. Some people don't like using these. They're pretty strong. Having two of them is pretty strong. Technically, you could also have three of them instead of the turret. But once again, I like running around and just doing this every now and then. It interrupts me less than having to stand still and cast the Havoc off. But this slot is also pretty flexible. You don't need to put the turret here you could put a third golem you could put anomaly to group the enemies up you could put um mark of impurity for much faster dps obviously the dream is to get the trial belt but it's also something you can just cast you could put dusk shroud which has a very very giant um shadow damage buff it's really strong and also, if you use the Force Shield, you could of course go with this node and trigger Force Shield regeneration if you're in trouble. And also one interesting thing you could put is the Consuming Embers, because Consuming Embers has this buff which is really strong and also you can convert it to Shadow Damage, so you can put Curse Stacks on the enemy. Right now... I don't do enough shadow damage to do that, but for that you'd probably also would be more like a, a model offering tree where you go for this, then you get the additional ailment and then it will be guaranteed to be cursed. There is my Havoc Orb set up. I think I showed this already. The reason why I have Havoc Orb on rent right now and not on Sacred, Sacred would obviously be better it's actually not even better 
But the main reason why I put it on rent is for a model offering, even though I'm not using it right now. I've been experimenting with it as well, of course, because everyone seems to be using it. But yeah, for me personally, I will use it eventually when I have more levels. Only level 81 and I haven't really grinded the past couple of days because Wilson was just so insanely buggy. It was not fun playing. And also on the side, I was making a melee build, which will be, I will make a video about the next couple of days as well, because that also got buffed by quite a lot from the buffs, from the patch. Um, so yeah, I'd ate up a little bit of time and also whenever I started grinding, it just got annoying and yeah. That's why I'm not higher level, I'm sorry, but hopefully this is helpful for those who wanted to see a little bit more detail. If you have any more questions, post in the comments below. Have a good one. Bye bye.